What's up guys, it's Zach here with Film School EDC and I am back for some more videos maybe. I have been wanting to do some little clips about some of the multi-tools and uh, uh, Swiss Army knives and things like that that I've been tinkering around with and uh, I thought I should get a video rig set back up uh, and so here it is on my bench. Um, this is going to serve as a bit of a sound and uh, video test for future videos. So as I clear off the bench here, uh, we're going to dive in first and foremost with my EDC uh, updated for 2022. And we're going to start things off with bringing back in the sunglasses and my watch. Now these are things that I almost never leave the house without and if I do I turn back around. Um, it changes day to day but uh, I like these Ray-Ban Light Forces because uh, they are very lightweight and the frames I uh, am okay with. Um, always polarized as well. These are replacement lenses um, and I'm gonna have to check on where I got those. I will put that on screen right now. But I got these uh, replaced uh, after they had started to wear down, which happens occasionally, but I like the frame, so I wanted to keep those. And then the watch changes every day as well, just depending on the situation. This uh, wasn't doing too much today, so this is uh, this is an Armatron mechanical watch. Uh, you can see it's skeletonized, so you can see the movement. Um, it's not anything crazy, but this was a gift uh, a few years back, quite a while back, and uh, I wear it. I wear it when I uh, when I feel like I can not break it. So if I'm not doing anything crazy, I try and slip this guy on, but otherwise I've got a few other watches that I wear, uh, depending on the day. So that's on my, uh, well, obviously on my wrist and on my face, usually. Um, the other things that I carry every day, well, everything I carry every day, this is everyday carry, but uh, one of the other things is going to be the phone, obviously shooting on the phone right now. So in my front left pocket goes my phone, this is its case, and uh, a flashlight. Um, and I found that that uh, doesn't, they don't interfere with each other too much and uh, anything more and it starts to get problematic. So try and limit what I keep in my pockets, keep it pretty slim and minimal. This is just a cheap crap case uh, from Amazon for the Pixel 6 Pro. I am an Android fanboy. Uh, uh, green bubble for life, um, but I like this case because it's got uh, it's a fabric cover, even though it's it's coming off after like a month of use. Um, if you can see that, um, but it uh, the fabric gives you a, a nice grip, but it doesn't catch in your pocket. So I always try and find fabric covered cases for my f uh, phone, and then uh, that the flashlight that I've been running for with uh, with for. I've been running with for quite a while is I believe this is I don't know if you can see this here uh, the Rovivon Aurora a 33 let me see if I can get some more light in there if that helps that makes it worse so uh, I believe this is the what is that yeah that's the a 33 so the Rovivon Aurora a 33 and uh, really like this light the longer length of it, um, because this is for reference, here is a Sharpie. Uh, this length is a little bit longer than most AAA flashlights, but this is about the diameter of a AAA flashlight. So it slips down into the pocket easily, but then it rides lower overall. So your pocket, you know, cuts it off right here. Um, and this whole length runs down into your pocket and it keeps things from snagging on it, especially the phone with the, uh, the camera bump here can tend to grab onto your flashlight and pull it out with the phone. Uh, the longer length has helped with that. Um, the clip is decent. It's nothing special. Um, but I do like that this is USB-C rechargeable. Again, Android, Android gang for life. Uh, and it, it gets the job done. Um, if I can click it on, it uh, has a decent beam pattern. It has really high CRI, uh, 90 plus, I believe, which is quite good for uh, a pocketable flashlight. Um, when we're talking about film lights, it's a little bit different. But I 
really wanted something with good CRI because I use this in poor lighting environments to see what colors things are. Um, there's a lot of times I've been looking at stuff uh, in my apartment with lamps on and, and everything's, uh, you know, different LED and you just want to see what color something actually is and you can just turn this on and you can say, okay, that's the real color of it, uh, at least under daylight conditions. I believe this is 5,000 or 5,600 Kelvin, something like that. Um, so yeah, that one has been real good. Get that Sharpie put away. Moving into the right side front pocket, um, my wallet, which I might need to... Give me a second. Okay, everything was pretty well covered. I've got some coupons here. Um, my wallet is actually from Distill Union, and uh, this is their Wally Bifold 2.0, I believe. Links for all of this will be in the description if you would like to support the channel by purchasing through those affiliate links or even just checking out the products for a little more detail. Um, this is the Distill Union Wally Bifold and really, really like this wallet. Uh, was looking for something with very specifically a pocket where I could keep uh, some different things including, uh, well, here's a floss pick and there's a t tab of lactate. Um, Realizing as an adult that you're lactose intolerant uh, is interesting and uh, trying to deal with that and keep keep one of these on me or two of these on me at, at all times. I wanted something with a pocket that I could slip stuff down into that wasn't going to deform too poorly. This has held up quite well. Um, I don't know if this is real leather or anything special, but it's it's been fine. It's soft. It's still quite slim. Um, the other thing that I needed when I went for this card or this wallet was a lot of card space. And, uh, so on this side, I have the, um, lactate and those things on this side, I have probably a stack of four or five, uh, business credit cards for different businesses, different things, uh, because I am a crazy, crazy person and have multiple businesses going at any given time. Um, on the inside, you have these two quick access pockets. And uh, I usually keep a credit card, my main kind of personal credit card in on one side, and my ID and ident other, you know, insurance card, stuff like that on the other. Um, th and then they have the cash clip on the inside, and that's pretty decent. Uh, I don't often carry cash, but I don't mind carrying cash. And I, if, I, if I'm going to end up with cash, I want to have a way to carry it. So this has worked out really well. There are magnets in it. Um, I can go more into depth on this in a, another video, but overall this has worked. Anyway, enough about the wallet. What you guys will probably want to see is the knife. And this is the uh, Benchmade Bug Out. I believe this is like the CF Elite version or whatever it is. Um, this is, uh, let's see if it'll focus on that sucker. Maybe not. Maybe if we come in. Okay, there we, there we go. Um, so this is the Benchmade bug out. This is really a, a great addition to my EDC in, in my opinion. Um, and this is the mini, I should have said. This is the Benchmade bug out mini. Um, really like the size and lightweight uh, form factor of this. It is quite slim. When it's uh, folded, it is has a narrow uh, cross section in the pocket. And that means that your hand can slip in and out past it very easily. This goes in my front right pocket with my wallet. So I like having a, a way to be able to slide my hand past it without catching on it every time. And a lot of thicker blades um, will do that. It is a bit short, but knife laws where I am at uh, require under three inches. So this is the way to go. And it is so lightweight that you... You really don't uh, notice it in your pocket. I might replace these scales down the line, but this has been good to me so far, and that access lock is just so much fun to play with. Um, very fidgety. Uh, and so that has been kind of my default. That changes occasionally. So does the flashlight, by the way. Um, the Rovivan uh, A33 does get swapped out on occasion um, for a couple of other lights that I, I have, but this is kind of the default, and then I'll change from there depending on what I'm expecting for that day. So that covers the things in my 
front pockets, but of course I do have a couple of other things. Don't carry anything in the back pockets, um, but I do of course have keys and here is a little bonus item that we're going to talk about in a second here. Um, the keys, uh, as you can see, are pretty as minimal as they can be, let's say. Um, and you can see that I could pull those off the carabiner. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but I have my rather large car key, uh, kind of a normal car key, but uh, uh, with the fob built in. And those are always tricky. Uh, and then I have a KeySmart Mini, which holds all of my uh, day to day keys. I have more keys in my backpack that I use on occasion, but uh, this is apartment keys and office keys and they are on this little KeySmart Mini. I found that this Mini was, was kind of game-changing. Um, when I went back to Carabiner Carry, uh, this really quiets the keys. The keys make, I mean, obviously the keys don't jangle against each other, but it works really well. There's just enough friction for this to move. It doesn't come loose, um, so I've really been happy with that. And I've got that on a, uh, just, I think this is a generic, it's a titanium, carabiner it came in a set with a large one and then a bunch of these small ones um but i've just pulled those off and used these on here for one to reorient the keys so that they hang uh this way side by side rather than hanging this way which i think causes a lot more uh bulk than is necessary uh and then you can see on the i don't know if you can see that there's a small that's a stainless steel split ring so it is rather strong but it was so small that it did spring out a little bit when I put it on the key that may be replaced. Um, this is one place where I'm not super happy with the aesthetic of it, but the functionality has been superb. Uh, both of those hang on a uh, Travax Talon. Now, I have to say I was very disappointed in Travax when they sent this to me. The spring gate was locked open. Or like it, it, it wouldn't spring back all the way. It, it went to about there, and uh, as you can see here, that gate is super out of alignment. And I was kind of excited to get this, but when I saw that, I emailed them. I said, "Hey, you know, is there anything that you can do about this? Can I send it back?" And they said, "Just go get some sewing machine oil and put it on there." And um, I'll admit that a little WD forty did bring the spring back into so it does close on its own but obviously wd-40 ain't gonna fix that so i'm living with it for now um it probably will wear prematurely and fail prematurely because of it but uh Travex apparently would rather just tell you to go buy sewing machine oil so your mileage may vary um the reason i like this uh, and the reason I'm stuck with it is because it's the only carabiner I can find with a flathead screwdriver, a big, chunky flathead on the top. And what I can do is pull this off of my belt, and it kind of is oriented like this. And I can do a tripod screw in a couple of seconds. And that's something that I come across often enough that that becomes necessary. Um, it is. Uh, it also has the uh, Phillips screwdriver on the bottom, as well as uh, what they claim I think is a a small uh, Phillips or small flat um, for very small screws. I don't know. Um, I've used it a couple times. It does function. It's obviously not great, and you're going to have your keys kind of in the way, um, but it does function. It is handy. This is this is game changer. Um, in my opinion, if there was one without this, without the Phillips, I think I would go for that. Um, not in love with the finish material and everything, especially when you're coming, you know, I have a lot of black, you know, black EDC items. Um, I would love this in black, uh, and I would love it in titanium or anything like that. Cause then you can match your pieces a little bit better, but whatever, you know, that's not, that's not the end of the world. Uh, one feature that they did quite well on this, if I can get my keys back in place, I think that's the right orientation is you can see that they have this uh, opening slanted and so when you hang your keys all of your keys you know wherever they're at they slide forward and they hang just a little bit forward in the carabiner which nearly completely eliminates rattle 
Um, obviously there's two here and you can hear there's noise, but if I'm walking, I'm not, there's not, there's no noise. And I'm on film sets where, you know, you've got to be quiet and I don't even think to grab my keys. I used to walk around and hold my keys with my hand and I don't even do that uh, anymore. It hasn't come up. It just hasn't been an issue for quite some time since I switched to this uh, uh, carabiner. So this plus the, uh, you know, soft nature of the key smart um, and the fairly minimal setup has been absolute game changer. All right, finally is what I call the Leatherman grip. And if this video turns out well and the, um, the uh, sound sounds okay and the video looks okay, then I will be doing a, a fuller video on this. Um, because I think it's, it's got a lot of features that are worth, worth looking at, but, uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of tease it. This is a modified Leatherman curl and I work as a grip in the film and television industry on occasion. And, uh, so because of that, I really wanted a tool that would do all of the things that I needed it to do. And I found it here with the Leatherman curl. Um, well, no, I made it here with the Leatherman Curl. I made it into what I call the Leatherman Grip. Obviously, started as a Leatherman Curl. Um, I have swapped out the, oh, I can't even show you. I have swapped, excuse me, I have swapped the main blade for the serrated blade because, again, this gets carried in conjunction with a straight blade. So I wanted a supplemental knife. And we do cut a lot of cordage and things like that. And... Um, this tip is exceptional for draw cutting where, uh, a drop point isn't going to excel quite as much. So put that away. We've got, and then on the other side, we've got a file, um, and, uh, a couple of interesting modifications on the inside, as well as the, uh, red TPU tips that I've 3d printed. Um, so if you guys want to see a full video on this, hit the like button or leave a comment down below or hit that dislike button in maybe I'll still do it um, because uh, this has been a, a fun passion project of mine and I've been carrying it a lot and uh, have very much enjoyed it. So um, I'll bring everything back in here. Uh, we'll go back to that wide angle. I don't know if that wide angle is in focus, so hopefully... It, it's all right for you guys, but we'll bring in everything and let you see the whole the whole shebang in perspective. Uh, there's a little bit of a modified Leatherman pouch. Oh my gosh, it still doesn't fit. Um, oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, can we do it? Oh, it's close enough. That's not the prettiest picture, but uh, should give you an idea. Um, this is what I carry, and it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty minimal. Um, it's two items per pocket, right? You got two here, and you got two here, and then you've got two on your belt, and then you've got two on your appendages, sort of. Um, but try and keep it pretty minimal uh, and uh, lightweight and truly useful. So. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, this is, a, like I said, a test, so things may change, improve, may, I may disappear for another five years, and we'll see. But uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.